Yo, what's going on, everybody? Uh, as per usual, hope everybody's doing awesome, especially through this oh, crazy ass election. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, hope everybody's doing great. We had a conversation with um, Kevin Ripple, who is probably better known for his work on scoring games like Gears of War and um, Aliens, Colonial Marines. Which I know wasn't too good of a game, but the score's still delicious. And um, a few uh, DC animated projects. And um, yeah, we talk about this throughout the whole uh, video, podcast, whatever. <laughs> video podcast, P2. But uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. It's uh, one of the best podcasts I've had. And um, it was, uh, I think we were trying to keep it short, but it's just time chiz. And it was awesome. It was awesome. So uh, also at the end of the uh, the video, um, I'm gonna put pictures that he sent me of his collection. You know, so like five or six pictures. Um, the stuff he was he essentially was talking to me about in his uh, while we were doing the video podcast, and um, he couldn't move the camera too much. Uh, he did bring. I think uh, One Piece, uh, which is, you know, freaking awesome. But he also sent me pictures so you guys can see it. Uh, check him out. So if you want to skip all the way to the end to check those pictures out or hopefully enjoy the podcast all the way through the end, that will be freaking awesome. As per usual, if you enjoy the content, uh, feel free to uh, leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. That would be freaking delicious. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, it was it was an awesome podcast. Uh and um, we talked about, you know, collecting. We talked about writing music for uh, games and movies and whatnot. Um, his life, uh, which he had, he's been through some shit. So it was amazing. So anyways, without further ado, let's get into it with Kevin Ripple. Kevin, yeah. I appreciate your time, bro. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Glad we can uh, just get this together real quick. I know, dude. I know that was crazy. Uh, I appre- again, I appreciate it, man. That was what was it? Yesterday I asked you, and you're like, "Okay, no problem. Let's figure out." Boop, boop, done. Yeah, it's, I, I'm sort of like it's, it's not crazy busy here. I'm working on one project, and I'm in between queues, waiting to get re- uh, revision notes back. So I figured, screw it, let's do it. Gotcha. Awesome. Awesome. So, so you're a composer. That's why you're talking about cues and whatnot, right? Yeah. Sorry. I, yeah. I don't know. You know. <laughs> There was it's no okay. introduction or anything. <laughs> I, I'll make a video at the beginning of this video, if you will, with myself, you know, introducing you and whatnot. But, okay. but okay. just in case I forget, you know, just want to make sure people know. <laughs> yes, I am a composer. I do music for uh, film, TV, and not so much games anymore. I still do it, um, but the bulk of my work has actually been uh, a lot of, especially lately, a lot of Warner Brother animation uh features yeah um, dc stuff right yeah a lot of dc stuff for sure which, which is awesome i saw the deathstroke uh one finally came out um yep. which i haven't heard that one yet um but um but yeah you know i love your shit you know <laughs> appreciate it yeah you've been you've been around for a long time man and I, I appreciate the support over over the years it's been it's been really great any any time, dude. Any time. Um, it's uh, one of the reasons I want to br- wanted to bring you on here. It was because we met because I think you found some of my videos or something, if I'm not mistaken, or a review on a. I can't I remember, know. but I know you hit me yeah. up. Yeah, I, it was alien related. That's the funny thing. Oh, probably, I remember. Yeah. I, I remember it was alien related. I think it was like I don't know a hot toy sailing or something or something about sideshow. But um, but since then, like you know, to to, to me, you're like the alien guy. Like, right. I, like yeah, I know I mean, you love I, I know you love Alien. Um, but I think most of all, I think you love Star Wars more. Am, am I correct there? Uh, I would say we, Star Wars had more of an impact on me as a young kid. Like I didn't see Alien, the first Alien, until after Star Wars. I know it was. They came out right around, well, Alien was 79. So I definitely didn't watch it when it came out. I remember watching it on VHS with my parents and I was young. I remember being young and I remember them trying to shove me out of the room <laughs> when, when the Burt Jesperser scene came on and I didn't leave. And then from then on, I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. I mean, it was tough like that back then, but of course. Um, I thought it was 
amazing. And uh, so that, from then on, that sort of like introduced me in, into the whole alien thing. And I remember getting the Kenner. It was weird. My parents didn't want me to finish watching the movie, but yet that Christmas, <laughs> Santa bought me uh, that, what was it? Uh, I forget how, how tall it was. 18 20, inches or something. 18, the was big it 18 one. 18 inches? With the dome. With the alien with the press the button in the back of the head and the. And the... Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, they got me that, but, you know, it was cool. And that set, set me on my way of uh, liking that franchise. Uh, but Star Wars had a more impact-wise for me, I think, because of uh, uh, the escapism it, it provided. And, and obviously the music, which Your was Willis, obviously baby. my first film. Because I, I saw it. I didn't see Star Wars when it first came out. I saw it when it was re-released, I think, two years later. Okay. Um and it was the, f I don't remember too many, seeing too many movies around that time uh, when I was that young, but that, that one was huge for me. I mean, the, the way the music affected me and just, I mean, obviously a little kid, I mean, everything, you know, it, it affected so many people, that movie. So mm -hmm. you know, what I'm saying here is not going to be like, oh, wow, you know, it affected him. <laughs> no, it's basically, it was it's basically the same thing, how the music affected me, sort of like lit the musical fuse in my head. And then, uh, so yeah, Star Wars has a, a, a more more of a meaning to me than uh, I think Alien. Alien yeah, is really. just a, a I think a, a passion for a cool universe, you know. Yeah, yeah. And like both franchises, people fucked it up. <laughs> Man, what are you gonna do? For lack of a better term, <laughs> you know. You but I mean, that's funny because like I'll, I'll I still enjoy both franchises and their sequels and prequels um because it takes place in the universe that i i grew up loving mm -hmm. you know, so there's only so much i can be disappointed with it with them but i can still enjoy them and i, I still do uh there are definitely a lot of cringe moments <laughs> uh, but, but the thing is like if i was this it, oh and i say I, I look at it this way all the time if i was this age watching a new movie come out and it was say alien or it was mm -hmm. say star wars or the first one or two of the series would i be as accepting as i was back then you know or i have i've just come so jaded because i have my own views and how obviously hindsight's 2020 and those movies yeah. are great but sometimes i watch them now and i'm like yeah. i love them but there's like there's issues with them you know correct Correct. So, but you could say there's issues with like anything, honestly. Like right, nothing's I mean, really if, perfect. If you're gonna if you're gonna critique something, you're there to critique it. So you're gonna find the things mm -hmm. that you have problems with. And I, as, as a as a fan of you know movies and and I, I don't get into arguments with uh, movie lovers or filmies or whatever you call them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I try not to get into discussions with them about debating about movies because I tend to like a lot of movies or the movies that I do see. I don't, I don't have hangups about stuff. I, I, I release all expectations. And the only reason I will not like a movie is if it can't draw me in. And if it, I don't let plot holes distract me. I don't let special effects distract me. I don't let, the only thing that sometimes distracts me from getting sucked in is terrible acting. Yeah, that's, that's that's the one thing. I'm pretty forgiving on the gamut of uh, you know uh, things that other people have hangups about. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so like I don't like because I'll say I like a movie and someone will be like, "Oh my god, you like that?" I'm like, yeah, I get is. that all the time. <laughs> I mean, like, who cares? Like, what was the, I? I watched Jack Reacher. I didn't see it in the theaters. I watched it. Tom uh, Cruise, right? Yeah. Okay. And I was like, why did I wait so long to watch this? That, that was a fun movie, man. And then this guy I worked with tweeted me <laughs> and who I worked with before. And he said, he was joking. And he goes, this is why we don't see eye to eye or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was in that vein. I'm like, what? I was like, what was bad about that movie? I'm like, so I try not to get into conversations about it because, and these people, they have points. They, they make great points when they don't like a movie. And I just don't see it or I don't let it affect my enjoyment of the film. Gotcha. Yep. That might be me being naive about filmmaking. I don't think I am. I mean, uh, 
No, because just, you're a consumer. No, I, you're supposed to enjoy. It. Like you're right, there I to enjoy. Enjoy. I don't want to. I don't. I tend to not watch films, or even. I mean, I know a lot of people. Uh, you know, there's there are composers out there, and even filmmakers, creative people, mm -hmm. who watch things, and they immediately look at it as how they would have done it differently. Gotcha. How they would have done it better, whether they are filmmakers or armchair filmmakers or armchair composers or whatever. I, I don't know. I just, I've never done that. I mean, like I watch it to enjoy it. You know, I don't, I don't go in there with the, um, you know, and scalpel and carve everything out of it and saying this, I don't like that. I would have done that differently. I would have done, well, you know what? You didn't get the job or you don't have the job <laughs> or you didn't do it. You know? So, and I know a lot of people do that. And that, I, to me, that ruins the experience of enjoying the film. Time no. out, time out, time out. Sure. Time out. Is that shirt you you have there? Is that 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 the expanse? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> man. It is the, the Canterbury man. The, the can. Remember the can, bro. Oh lordy. Oh lordy, yeah. my man. See, see, this is why I love you, bro. God damn. So, I, it's it's funny because I, I I had it in my head because I wanted to talk because you love space and all this shit. So I was gonna ultimately ask you. Have you seen The Expanse? Have you read the Love books it. or anything like that? Bruh, what a fucking show, dude. It's amazing. Yeah. I keep telling I everybody to watch it. I, I, I am in my circle of friends uh, and creatives that I, that, I, that I converse with on a daily basis. Uh -huh. None of them, I couldn't get none of them to watch it. I don't know why. I'm like, it's so freaking amazing. And then I finally, my dad was asking, he goes, what, what, do you have anything to watch? Or, you know, do you, or what are you watching lately? I'm like, dude, you got to watch The Expanse. He's a Star Trek fan. So I said, The Expanse, yes, it's in space and everything, but I think it leans more towards uh, Star Trek. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we're going to compare space gotcha, gotcha. movies and storylines, <laughs> I think it leans, like, I think Star Trek fans would enjoy it more than star wars fans okay. I, mean, I say this because like just the 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 design of everything um like all the ships in the expanse are designed for use not for aesthetics yeah, correct uh which i thought was awesome at mm -hmm. first i was like that's the ship they're gonna be flying around in. <laughs> you know, but then you come to realize that you know obviously it makes sense it makes technical sense with everything so mm -hmm. That was one thing I was telling my dad, you know, try to get him to watch it. And he started watching. He loves it. He that's loves it. that's so, awesome, dude. I love just waiting the show, for the, man. Uh, what is it, fifth season coming up? Uh, yeah, it's season five. Uh, the 15th, I think, of December. So, oh, good. That's cool. Yeah, dude. They're going to release three episodes and then, uh, you know, every yeah. whenever afterwards. But it's, oh, my God. Dude, it's funny that I found that show because I was looking for more material from Clinton Shorter because I enjoyed his um District 9 score oh, right. so okay. much. So, you know, I was looking. I'm like, what else has this dude done? And then I saw The Expanse, and I saw the lady and the planet behind yeah. it. <laughs> Sci-fi looking? All right. So I pressed play. Yeah. The first three songs, I'm like, oh, my God. So I bought the soundtrack before I even watched the show. Oh really? And for the yeah, I, I I think I spent like three months listening to the soundtrack, and then I'm like, dude, where's let me watch this show? It has to be, you know. Yeah. And you know, sure enough, I found it on Sci-Fi. I think it was three seasons since already. And yeah, um, that's I, I think I I got a, I discovered it two uh, halfway through the second season. It was two seasons because since, I saw yeah. so many people uh, tweeting about it, and I actually was I following one of the writers. But I was like, you know, what? let me give this a shot. This everybody's loving it, you know. Mm -hmm. let me, and, and the first episode had me. I was like, oh damn, <laughs> bro! Like I get, I get goosebumps just thinking about it, dude. And I rewatched it again, and I had my wife sit down with me. You know, she's not too much of a sci-fi person, right? But right. she, she enjoyed the crap out of it. Like she's invested. She's watched all four seasons, so nice. she, she's she loves it. And I'm like, I told you, you were gonna love it, dude. It's an awesome show. Like it, it really people good. need to give it a chance. Need to give it a chance. It's one yeah. of the best sci-fi shows out there. To me, it's probably the best sci-fi show for me personally. For sure. It's, it's yeah, amazing. and then when uh, when that um, I think that when that was between seasons, I tried. There was another show. 
it's along the same aesthetics. Mm -hmm. I forget the name of the show. And I couldn't get into it. I was like, I think I'm just wanting this to be Expanse while Expanse is on hiatus. And, what, was, and it on not that void. <laughs> was it on Netflix? Filling that void. Was it on Netflix? Like a Netflix exclusive? Because I know there was they were trying to do something. I forgot the name now, but it was it was trash compared to the to the Expanse. Yeah, I don't I mean. remember the name of it. It might have been Netflix. It might have even been on Sci-Fi. I don't know. Got don't it. Know. Got it. But, but that's anyway. a that's a delicious show. I'm glad you're wearing that shirt, bro. <laughs> that can I have hurt. one other one from. Uh, <laughs> The, the show I forget which one I have it's uh, the logo is the triangle uh, I can't it's not what what are but Tyco the, station no it wasn't Tyco oh maybe it was maybe it is Tyco I don't know it's it's just another one I have two and it's the only two that I thought looked good <laughs> fire fire awesome um so I wanted to ask you about um being an aliens uh you know you just fucking love aliens and you had the chance to work on colonial marines yes. so how how was that dude you're you know like i'm assuming that was pretty freaking awesome it was yeah when i saw i i actually didn't know it was in development until i saw it on the cover of game informer okay so when uh when i saw that i was like screw it i don't know how I just like I, I didn't have any connections at Gearbox at that time. Um, I had just I forgot it was 2007 I think that I saw it, mm -hmm. and I had just come off of Gears. Um, oh, that's right, you did Gears of War for yeah, those for you know War, yeah. for those for those um, listeners like, out there. That was released. I had that under my belt, and then uh, I did uh, one uh, one or two other gigs, and then uh, so then I saw that, and I was just like I picked up the phone and I just left a message on whatever number that received my call. I don't remember if it was an HR or something. I don't, <laughs> since I don't have any connect, I just made the call and I was like, hey, I introduced myself. I'm like, listen, I'm just asking if you guys have a composer yet, blah, blah, blah. And I got an email back, I think the next day saying, hey, let's schedule a call. Let's schedule the call. And they were like, you were one of the guys that we were looking to um, to score it uh, because of your work on Gears. I was like, oh, cool. And I don't even remember if I had to write anything to pitch for it. Really? Like, I think, I don't remember writing a demo for it. I think I just submitted the, some gear stuff and maybe some other things. I mean, I, I can't imagine it just getting it. I probably had to write something. Because <laughs> uh, that's just how the industry works. Someone just hands you shit. Um, so, yeah, so I got it and I was like, Ah, yeah, man, this is awesome. And and they told me on the outset that they didn't want to really go in a new, new musical direction because mm -hmm. the story was canon. And uh, I think, it, if I remember correctly, it takes place right after Aliens, um, th that storyline. And so they wanted me to blend Jerry Goldsmith and James Horner scores with a little flair of my own. And... That was a lot of fun doing. So that was that was pretty awesome. I got to study both those scores really well, um, and I was able to use it because it was uh, it was Gearbox, Sega, and then Fox. So Fox allowed us to use, I think, some of the themes loosely. Okay. Um, which I mean, because since it's it's a license, it's their license. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think I had a problem. Yeah, that we ran everything past them. So whatever themes are in that score were obviously were on there on purpose and it was fun it was it was a lot of fun and then i you know it's a shame because the game i know i heard i, I read <laughs> whenever it came out and yeah it was it could i don't know why i couldn't finish the game um i don't know if it was because i lost interest because i just the game i was on the game forever gotcha like literally a long time i don't read i think i was I want to say 2007 that number sticks out in my head and then i didn't finish it <clears throat> till 2012 really is holy shit out? is that look up can you look up when it came yeah, out yeah i'm looking at it right now talk to me google uh 2013 february 11th yeah so i recorded the score in 2012 and you were attached to it from 07 i was attached to it so there were long periods of time where i didn't work on it at all okay and then there was, uh, 
I don't know why, because they kept on redesigning stuff. I don't know if it had to do with the engine, but I was like, I want this to be over. You know, it was a, <laughs> I love the project, but when you're on a project that long and you're not an in-house employee, mm-hmm. you, you have to you have to work on other stuff. Correct. So when that happens is you leave that mindset of that project. Uh-huh. And when you do that, it takes a, when you have to start writing again for it, you have to sort of force yourself into that. And, and by that time you're, I mean, a lot of time had passed between writing, not writing and then writing again, where I'm like, I don't know if I want to use the stuff I originally, cause it's not what I would write now. I mean, there, that much time was in between writing. So, but I ended up doing it. So to me, the score is not very cohesive, but I think it is cohesive because of all the Goldsmith and Horner material that mm-hmm. I had attached to it. Um, but yeah, there were large gaps in between. Uh, That's crazy. Writing that. uh, but it was nice to be done. Uh, and it didn't even get it. The score didn't even get an official release. I know. I know. Trust me. I remember when the game came out and I knew you were, you know, attached to it because you've been uh, talking about it on Instagram and on Twitter. Right. And I know you put a link, a link for sound, uh, SoundCloud, I think it was. Uh, there, it was on, it's, the full score is on my site. Oh, is it? It's, it's just streamable. I don't think it, you can't. I mean, if you can figure out how to download it, then more <laughs> yeah, power to it. The thing, I'm going to say this, and I don't even you know, whatever, if, if, if I have to take it down. But usually when people direct message me through my mm-hmm. site or any other way and say, hey, listen, I love your score. Is there any way I can get the score? Gotcha. I'll throw them a Dropbox link. and some, some, Surprisingly enough, a few uh, composers that I follow do that. You know, yeah. you talk to him, um, you know, I, I, what's, it, what's his name? Uh, Lorne, Lorne Balf. Mm-hmm. Like, um, he was awesome enough to uh, give his uh, score for um, Ghost in the Shell. You know, that, that, that movie, I think it was oh, him right. and, and Clint, and, and that, that score never came out. I did oh, music on that movie. Are you serious? Yeah. Get the fuck out. I worked for Clint on it. I, I did that's, some stuff for Clint, yeah. Oh, that's all. See, my, God damn it, man. <laughs> that's what's up that's what's up dude yeah so, i was on it with him and then lauren was brought in and i still don't know the story behind that um i don't know if there is a story behind it but i know at first it was just clint and then lauren came in uh but yeah i i helped clint out on a, a few cues that um, is sick because i love clint's work oh my god dude, so do i he is he is such I can't say enough things about that dude. He is such <laughs> a nice guy, man. That's awesome. I, was, I, I worked for him for, I don't know how long I was on it. Not a long time. Uh, but that short amount of time was, proved to me, you know, what kind of, what kind of dude he was. He, he's, a, he's a stand-up guy, really generous uh, and super kind. So That's yeah, good to know. That's good to know. Now I like it more. definitely warranted. He, he deserves every bit of it. That's beautiful. So, but, but anyway, so yeah, so uh, Lauren, you know, he was, he knew that I liked it or whatever. He hit me up. Funny enough, he just hit me up like a few minutes ago asking for my email. I don't know what the hell he's going to send me, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, I get excited all the time because like, you of know. Of course, yeah. So, but it's just funny that you mentioned that because I, I, a lot of, it, 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 to be honest, again, I, I'm such a score buff. I, you know, it, living in the, in the era we live right now is amazing like i used to like like i still love collecting physical copies you know it's just that's how i was brought up you know yeah of but course. but living in this digital era where almost every score gets a digital release it's you know almost i say almost because i still have a few that I, I i've never seen and i i'm dying to have to have but and then you can contact composers like yourself Dude, I love your your score. Maybe not even ask for it. Just I love you know blah blah blah. And you're like, you know what? Shit, bro. Here you go. Drop a, you're yeah, like, exactly. Oh, you make that person's fucking year easy. Yeah. Easy. And you know, as, as composers, you want your music out there. So if, if someone asks for it, you know, I'm gonna be unless it's a, a serious infringement on a contract, mm-hmm. then you know whatever. And if and if you if you if somebody if a company says what you did was illegal. You can't do that. I'd be like, okay. I mean, I, I don't know what they can do. Gotcha. Uh, but it's probably not worth their time to put legal on top of it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'll, anytime anybody asks, if I don't have a score release, I'll try to, you know, throw it up. Like stuff that I just did, maybe not just, I think over the last year, maybe year and a half, I did an Adam Strange 
uh, short for DC Showcase. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They're little they're little shorts that uh that get attached to DB uh, Blu-ray releases and such. Um, and that was a quick thing I did, and few people kept on hitting release your score for those. Release your score. Is they gonna get a release? And I'm I said I. Cause this, they weren't even really mixed for a release yet. They weren't mastered. So I was like, I'll, I'll try to get to it. And I was super busy at the time when people were asking for it. And I'm like, just hold tight. It'll come. And so just recently, I think over the last few months, I mixed and mastered and there, those are up on my site too. But I, 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 when I initially released the stuff that don't have soundtracks, it's just up there for streaming. Gotcha. Um, Cause it, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I don't put a download link. Uh, Cause it doesn't matter to me. I should just put a download link. Who cares? Why, why should I have somebody come to my open, have my page open all the time and <laughs> to play these damn tracks. Hey, uh, keep, keep the traffic coming. Well, yeah, but I mean, I, I just like lately, I mean, that's where my content is, but websites, <clears throat> they're not what they used to be or they're not needed. Like they're, they were mm-hmm. used to be. Like, with social media and be able to push yourself out there on Instagram, Twitter. Um, I'm really not on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook anymore, but I, I still maintain my music page on Facebook through my, through my wife's account. (laughs) Um, because I just, Facebook just, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, I got you. Yeah. But with those three platforms, it's, you know, your site, you don't have to have much stuff on it anymore. So it's a nice place for people to go to see content and everything. But like I had a news section on my site, it was sort of like a blog for I posting new for posting news mm-hmm. items, but that was the first thing on my site. Now I move that to the bottom, and now it's just the music's right the at the music. top. So, but yeah, I mean that that's where I I do stuff that's not released. I I put it up there, and then I you know I post on Twitter and social media. But I sh- I should probably put the download links there too. <laughs> hey, maybe we'll see some download links later. Maybe, Who knows? Maybe Who knows? For the Who knows? alien score in the. Uh, Adam Strange score. It, it, so a question about that Alien score. Like, again, yeah. being, being being a huge fan of the Alien franchise, and you you were able to uh, essentially, like you said, study Horner's and Goldsmith uh, score. I'm I'm assuming that was pretty cool. Were you nervous having to follow kind of, you know, in those footsteps, you know? Uh, no, because I wasn't. I didn't feel like I had to match it or. Uh, like I knew no matter what I did, it would be different unless I strictly just copied off the score, which I think I did for like maybe a little part of a piece on the track. And if a soundtrack was released, I wouldn't even put my name on it. I would put gold. I would put Jerry Goldsmith gotcha. uh, because I just used so much of the piece in there. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I wasn't nervous mainly because I think the love of the franchise was overpowering, I think, any anxiety that I might have had about it. Um, I know from from hearing about, you know, after the game was released, you know, there were critics of the score and there were praises for the score. So I tend to not think, uh, I try not to write to please everybody. Um, mm-hmm. You can't, there's no way you can do that in this business. Um, but yeah, there was there was no nervousness to, to uphold a certain status of a score for that franchise. I think I was just too excited, you know, to be using those themes and incorporating my own stuff that was heavily influenced by those two scores. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't, it was, cool. I didn't feel any pressure. Cool, cool, cool. You were like, fuck so, it. I, I got to do this and I'm, you know, I'm fucking excited. Let's rock and roll, baby. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Maybe that's <laughs> a little bit done. of being na- naive, but you know, whatever. It helped hey, me get through it, the gig and I didn't feel any stress. You know, I, w- I would assume if you were thinking too much about their scores and I guess not fucking it up or whatever, uh, you would not have been as creative as you would have been otherwise. That's possible. Yeah. Yeah. I knew I had to match a, a, a sound um that was created for those scores and and horner obviously was heavily influenced by goldsmith Mm -hmm. so uh there was this um sort of palette that i had to sort of uh create that was in line with their two scores that i think that was more i wouldn't say nerve-wracking to me than anything but it was it was getting the voicings right it was getting the 
the synth elements right. Like forget the orchestral elements of the score. Um, it was the, 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 the ambient sounds and the uh, gotcha. synth and uh, you know, all the other elements that like there was a goldsmiths use in alien. He uses an instrument called, what was it? I always forget the name of it. Cause it's not a, it's a <laughs> sack, butt, I think a sack, butt. sack, but as a composer, I'm ashamed that I don't remember the name of the damn. Because <laughs> it's it's like the serpentine. No, it's not a sack, but a sack, but is a pretty much a, a trombone. What the it hell is like that? A... Yeah, it's not that. It's it's like the serpentine type of instrument. This is the kind of composer we're dealing with here, guys. Yeah, guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking. Serpent. <laughs> I think it's called the serpent. It's called the serpent. Are you serious? A serpent? Yeah, it's called the serpent. It's like this. And if you if you listen to uh, Alien, uh -huh. um, the score, you'll hear this sound in the score. Yeah. That's that instrument. <laughs> That's crazy. And when I wanted to use that instrument, I couldn't find a, a serpent player. Oh, okay. Somebody who played that. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, but I couldn't, I couldn't find one. Um, so I emulated the sound <clears throat> with a, a tuba mouthpiece and i pitched it down and it sort of resembles that that uh serpent that's a crazy instrument dude it's humongous yeah it's pretty big it looks like a like a japanese letter like like a three or right or just something it's it's not a very wow. popular instrument you can't but... find many people who play them <laughs> that's crazy or have them. Like... yeah so anyway that was used that was used a lot in uh in goldsmith score that's crazy Hey, anyway, that's a little behind the scenes l l little bts i love it i love it now now i know again loving this crap so much you have certain collectibles i assume still or maybe not i don't know do you have any uh i know you collect a lot of NECA, if i'm not mistaken maybe not a lot but some NECA stuff i right? i i slowed down my collecting got it. <laughs> i i don't i don't have room <laughs> and uh like I have, I have a, a, a decent amount in my studio here. Like, cause I, I, I my collection, like I, I t tend to, how do you say, disperse my money spending on different collecting type of things. Like I like collecting um, original art pieces from artists uh, that I like, um, sculptures of artists that I like, and then movie franchise sculpts okay. like Alien and Star Wars. Um, I have a decent amount of sideshow stuff I would say decent amount. I mean, I've seen people's collections and uh, like mine is just a joke compared. Um, I don't think I have a collection. That's a, let's put it that way. I don't think I have a collection. I just think I have some, I keep on looking up here because on the top of my shelves, That's what your here, I, have, I have a alien big chap head from sideshow. Let me see if I can plug that out. I don't know. Can you see the heads? Oh, I oh yeah. Oh yeah, I can see okay, both. So that one over there, can you see my finger? That one back far is the alien chap. This one's the alien warrior Ooh. up there. And then I've got I'd walk with the camera, but it's USB. <laughs> it's and that good. back shelf right there is a bunch of other sculptures. I've got uh the Prometheus engineer in there. Um nice. And over here there's I've got an alien's sculpt on top of the tv i think that's tv listen to me on top of the piano <laughs> it's uh it's i think it's a side yeah it's a it's one of the one of my favorite ones of the side show I it's one it. of the aliens coming through the wall with the, the chains the chains hanging. yeah 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 that's dope and then okay, i'm gonna bring this one over here because this one is is hard to find now and i'm gonna is it really yeah let me get it it's it's i forget who did it um alien bitches that's what's up Is, this, is that the Kotobukiya? Yeah, I forget. The tail just came off. Is this guy? Have you ever seen this? Yes, one? yes, I've seen that. I've seen that. Uh, I fell in love with this as soon as I saw it, and it took me forever to find out where to get it from. It says this one is Pewter Models, is presented by Artstorm Limited. Made in China. I forget. Computer models. Huh. Shame on me. I forget the artist who uh, did this. Yeah, F U W. Oh, I, I said Futur. <laughs> it's F. It's Future. 
but it's spelled oh, F E W. Future. Future. Future models. <clears throat> oh, this guy's dusty. Right, yeah, all my crap's dusty. That's the hardest thing is keeping it dust free, man. Yes, I do have is. um in the back corner over there. Sorry. That corner is a mm. glass case with oh I got more aliens on top there. I have three you probably can't see them. I see so I see three away. white things back there. I'm assuming those are well, I mean, those are the, the first order troopers. Ah, there you but go. up on the top I've got one big chap, one alien warrior, and one another alien warrior that's posed like that. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and inside the glass case I've got I wish this camera can come off. <laughs> <laughs> we just walk walk you over there. Um, but yeah, there's there's actually I forgot about all those aliens in there, but they, those are all sideshow back there. Got it, got it. That statue that you have, sideshow was selling it at their uh, on their website back in the day. But when this were, one right you know, here, yeah, <clears throat> that's how I that's how I saw it because I'm looking right now and there's a picture on Pinterest of the statue and it says sideshow collectibles at the bottom. So they were alien. Oh, maybe they licensed it for a little bit. I can't find out where the tail goes. It goes in the front. I'm looking at a picture right now between two heads. It comes out. Yeah, from the front part. So. And I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, there's just like a little square hole. A little square hole. Ah, there we go. Oh, it just slides in and out. It shouldn't be that loose. It's all the dust. <laughs> I'm going to set this guy to the side now. It's so delicious, though. Yeah, I love collecting this, the, the busts and the statues. Um, especially when they're little different interpretations by mm -hmm. artists. But there's this one thing I haven't got on board yet with is the uh, Mythos from Sideshow. Really? I, obviously, they look awesome. They're great. But when they created the Mythos King alien, you were like, eh. I was like, no, it, that's not how the how the colony works. There's no king. It's just a queen. That's right. That's right. It's like, well, stop making shit up. But that's the whole point is to make stuff up <laughs> and to sell, to sell more items. Um, but yeah, there's like, I'll, when I buy those from, when I buy the stuff from Sideshow, mm -hmm. I, tr I try to go for the more actual rather than the Mythos stuff, even though the Mythos stuff is really cool. I mean, that that Alien and their Star Wars Mythos stuff is pretty oh, That Star Wars stuff is disgusting. I yeah. love it. That Gamorrean Guard is the best Gamorrean Guard I've seen mm -hmm. anywhere, dude. Yeah. Wow. It's so yeah, good. They, they, they've been doing amazing work. Yes, they have. I got a tour of the facility. I know. Back in like 2013 or some shit. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. That was pretty cool. That I was remember. very cool, actually. Cause you went and I, I had think I had gone uh just a couple of years back. They they were they had the same displays, you know. They had the the that big. It's not an orc, but a troll. That big troll. Oh yeah, from yeah, right in, the, right in the foyer, yeah. At the entrance and whatnot, it, it was awesome. I mean, in, I, as, as you, I can attest. I mean, that facility is fucking amazing. Yeah, it, dude. it was pretty badass. Yeah, and it's so cool. I mean, every, you know, they have so many creative people working there. Um, but yeah. So, but with the side source stuff, I have, um, I have, uh, I get, you know, I don't get too much Star Wars stuff from them. I, uh, you do get a lot of Star Wars Legos that I know. Oh, my uh, kids. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jeez. And it's, it's funny because you know how much money was spent on Legos and specifically Star Wars Legos. And now they're in the shed in bins. <laughs> bins uh, they do have some that they really like still propped up in their bedroom i mean they're 13 years old um so they're sort of like moving away from that a mm -hmm. little bit uh but yeah they don't go out of their way like during during this uh, whole quarantine thing in the beginning i they wanted me to get the bins out of the out of the shed and they started doing stop motion stuff with the legos and everything that is so awesome it was it was pretty cool and then you know they they ran the gamut on that and then then it's like okay we're bored of this now i mean <laughs> I, you can't blame it. you're stuck in a house can't go anywhere and you can only maintain a certain an interest in something for so long before you you know it's beat to death when it's the only mm -hmm. thing you're doing. um so uh 
but yeah, uh, the Star Wars stuff ranges from, you know, probably NECA. Uh, is that how you say NECA? NECA, yeah. That's how yeah. I say it, NECA. NECA, Sideshow. Uh, what, are they, what are some other ones? Um, I forget where I got my first Stormtrooper from. How, how big is it? Is it like a high it's, it's 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 this guy. It's about twelve, four, like a one six. Know, you know the sizes more than I know the, <laughs> this the actual because you know there's 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 set sizes for the yeah, yeah. they're the same size as the first order troopers from sideshow. So about I would say what sixteen inches, eighteen inches maybe. Is it a statue or an action figure? It's an action figure. It, it, it's posable. Okay, so one six scale. It'll be twelve inches. That's 12 inches? It seems bigger than yeah. 12 inches. I mean, the character could be a little bit more uh, uh, than 12 inches depending on his size, but oh, the, one right, six right. scale is, is 12 oh, inches. Six, okay, like okay. six feet human being would be 12 inches in six scale. Gotcha. Okay. So, yeah, I forget where we're – it's on the tip of my tongue. Um, I don't know. But it was one of my first purchases. That and the Bo- and Boba Fett uh, six scale figure. Um, Delicious Boba oh, Fett, bro. What's that? Delicious Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah, for a while there, I had a couple of Boba Fetts, but they weren't as high, they weren't really high quality stuff, and they got put in the shed. Mm. You haven't got any hot toys. Maybe that's what it was from. There you go. Maybe that's where the Stormtrooper and Boba Fett <laughs> were from. Hot toys. Yeah, but also hot toys. Also, I bought my. I don't even know where they are. I think they're in the den in, in, in the TV room in, in the house. Is those short little ones with the big heads and the big yeah, hands. yeah 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 like the yeah, vinyls if guys. you will yeah yeah i have two troopers and darth vader and i think a boba fett yeah those are still and i didn't bring those out to, to the studio because i was this i've only had this studio space for it's about wow, two years already but before this was this was this is a garage converted into the studio but before this i was in a back room in the house and i there was like that room was more collectibles than music equipment. <laughs> so when I came into here, I promised myself that I would lessen the collectibles and, you know, and focus on work, make it, make it look more studio. ish. not that there's anything wrong with filling a studio with, with collectibles, but I also didn't want to, you know, if I had clients in, you know, Oh, he's, he's a one track, you know, sci-fi horror uh-huh. kind of guy. And I, I don't know, cause I, I like to work on all different types of projects. Um, so I try, it's not working. I mean, I try to have a neutral looking studio, but it's more <laughs> dark than anything. <laughs> um, we can definitely, uh, or I can definitely attest that you can do pretty much everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Music wise. Um, yeah. and your album, uh, as we grab the stillness, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Bro, bro. When I tell you that shit is fucking amazing. It's fucking amazing, dude. I play Thanks. that shit. With um um uh, now I'm forgetting their names uh Atley Atley Overson I think is how you pronounce his name yeah, um yeah. and and the other Icelandic dude from the Oliver? Broad Church uh oh yeah Oliver yeah Arnold. like like yeah. like when I when I, I used like I knew Oliver from Broad Church first which I know you like the the score because I know we had the conversation about that yeah that's right that's right so and you know so I listened to his stuff. And then you came out with that album, and I'm like, bro, this is like right there, like fucking, like just, just beautiful, bro, beautiful. Yeah. So I love that shit. It's funny because, um, when I discovered Oliver, it was I don't know if it was, it was weird because Broadchurch and my discovery of uh, Oliver Arnold's w- was, I think, not like it happened at the same time, but I don't think it was one because of the other. Gotcha. You know, I just I just discovered both around the same time. But anyway, studying his music and listening to his music was like there's such a simplicity to it and a a beauty to it. And I was like I wasn't like, "Oh, I can do that. That's, you know, that's easy." <laughs> no, it, I what I thought was stop putting so many restrictions on me when I do my own stuff. Just freaking write, man. Just whatever comes out. You know, so I actually started writing the album with two pieces. I recorded two pieces. I think they're the first two pieces on the album. Um, I went in the studio, recorded them. And then uh, I think I just went back and I wrote, I don't know how many pieces, there are eight songs on it. I just continued writing after the first scoring session. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I went back in and recorded again. But when I first started writing, 
I didn't have a purpose for the album. I didn't have, where, where am I going with these two pieces? You know, I, I, had, I didn't have, I needed, lack of a better term, I needed a narrative mm -hmm. to, to kickstart the creative process to finish out the album. So after hearing the first, writing and hearing the final, the first two final mixes, I was like, you know what? I've always been wanting to write something to, and I don't know how much you know about it or how much people listening or my, you know, people know, mm -hmm. know about it, but I wanted something musically to sort of look back on my time when I had heart failure and a heart transplant. Uh, so after I wrote those first two songs, I'm like, and I, I sort of like, cause I didn't write those first two songs with that in mind. I wrote those two songs, but then after I came up with the, okay, this can be the start of that. I was like, oh, it's fucking perfect. I mean, like they, they, they just fit exactly where I wanted to go. And then because of, you know, listening to Olafur and um, Johan, Johansson, mm -hmm. RIP. I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm, just you know just write stop being I, I don't know I catch myself writing sometimes when it's for myself uh it's got to be better it's got to be and that's not a bad quality to have but why does it have to be better mm -hmm. you know are you doing it to sort of show your chops are you <laughs> doing it because um it's it's a release it's it's what you hear it's what's what speaks to you and, and I think artists, rather than composers, do that naturally, I think. Gotcha. They, they write because it's what's in them. It's, it's, you know, and I think as a young composer coming up in an industry, you sort of put a lot of pressure on yourself to be like, to sound like, to be recognized, you know. And that's and partly I think that's why a lot of artists these days are getting film scoring gigs is because they've done their own thing for so damn long, they have a sound. Gotcha. Um, that makes sense. So as a composer coming up, you sort of are, that might be just me. I mean, I don't know. I'm speaking from my experience. Um, I might have, you know, because as a composer, you study to be a jack of all trades. You want to be, if you're called on to do a certain style, you want to be able to do it. So you study all these different artists, you study all these different composers and, and, and you become extremely versatile, which makes you valuable, but it also goes against you, I think, in a way that, okay, Kevin's an amazing, you know, just for conversation purposes, mm -hmm. Kevin's an amazing composer, but what's his sound? You know, some people say I have a sound, but if you say, you, uh, you know, think of an artist, like, of course, I'm going to draw a blank here, but any artist that has started to do film scores mm -hmm. um, that has sort of made their way in the industry because of their songwriting, because of their sound. Um, they will get called on because of that, because of them, because of who they are and what their sound is. So when I to back, go back to the album is like when I started out to do the album, when I got the narrative of the album, I was like, I have to approach it like that. I have to, I have to not care. I just have to write what's what I think you know, as an artist would. Gotcha. So, and that's what I did. And I, and, the, and the, the songs on the album, Chron Chronicle? Chronicle. Yeah. The yeah. experience from beginning to, so, you know, pretty much the end of when I had heart failure to the nine months during living with a, a heart pump and then to my transplant and a little bit after my transplant. I mean, it's not like month by month it's yeah, just yeah. the different emotional aspects of that period of time and i don't think i've ever really explained what each piece and the names of each piece sort of you know cover what i wanted to wanted it to say but i've never really i've always wanted to write a, a post and go into detail about it uh but i never did uh, you should do, you i don't, don't do want to i don't what's that i was gonna say you should do uh like a video series you know you know the masquerade and this is what it means to me. This is why, you know, I compose this. I could, I, I could do that. That's not a bad idea. I mean, I think one of the reasons why I didn't do it at first, I mean, I, I explained that when I was released, what it was, what the album was, but I didn't want to burden people with a vision 
that wasn't theirs because I think music has to be accessible to everybody. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying if I explained it, it wouldn't have been accessible to people, but you sort of like music, I wanted it to first be listened to. And I don't know, I have no idea how many people purchased it. I have no idea how many people listen to it, but you sort of want the music to be theirs. Yeah. Right. You want them to react to the music and, and, and bring it into their own life. And I didn't sort of want to put a label on everything because then they'd be thinking that on first listen or not, you know, I don't know. I just wanted it to be more acceptable. But now that it's been out for a couple of years now, I probably could do a whole write up of it. But that was the reason why I didn't do it at first is I it just I wanted it to be music for people. Gotcha, you know? gotcha. I know. And, and even if you do, let's say you write up and all this stuff, like it, it's not going to change the way I listen to it. You know, I I might be thinking about you and in your your heart surgery and whatever but then i'm gonna bring it back to like what am i feeling right now why am i listening right, to this music right. you know let me let me get in the zone or what whatever whatever i want to do but um but you having again that that surgery which was in, insane like you you have gone through some crazy shit um you're still here like that's an awesome story in itself dude um, I remember your arm um getting fucked up as well because of the, the whole heart surgery yeah the arm the arm got messed up um, on the initial surgery, when I went in, when I, uh, cause I, I had heart failure, I, they brought me to Cedars, uh, and during, they had to put an LVAD in me. Now an LVAD is a, is a left ventricular assist device. Okay. So it's basically a tube that hooks up to your left ventricle and it's a tiny little turbine that pushes blood through your body because your left ventricle is what pumps the blood through the body yeah and mine was mine failed so they put the pump in and then the day after they put the pump in i was my body i don't know what because of the trauma or whatever was creating clots everywhere so one 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 clot went to my shoulder and cut off the blood flow to my left arm and uh, at that point, when that happens, I, you know, what I assume is your arm starts swelling up because it, it needs oxygen. Mm-hmm. So they couldn't operate on my arm to set, to say, well, not that they did save it to alleviate the pressure because I had internal bleeding where the pump was. <laughs> so they had to stop that first. Then they had to cut my arm open uh, it's called a, a fasciotomy surgery where they have to cut the, I mean, I don't want to get gross here, but it's okay, man. Go ahead, it's bro. science and medicine. They had, they had, they had to cut the, uh, the, the, the sacs your muscles are in are called fascia. Okay. So in order for the muscles to get oxygen, since the blood wasn't bringing it to them, they literally had to cut the fascia sacs and let the muscles breathe. Breathe. Wow. Right. That's crazy. So they did that. I, I mean, I've got this cut here. I don't know well it's yep. coming up this cut here and then this cut here so they did that um it's obviously saved my arm um but because they couldn't s- get to it so quickly i had a couple of extensions of muscle died in my arm so they had to while i was recovering with the pump in my chest i had to have two or three surgeries to remove dead muscle from my arm. <laughs> so, Good Lord. so then while I was recovering with, after my chest being cracked open to put in a pump, I was doing physical therapy for my left hand. So I wouldn't lose any function in my left hand because when that trauma happens to the left hand, scar tissue starts to set in. So when, if scar tissue sets in, then your tendons can't move. You don't have any use for your hands. Got it. So anyway, the doctor who worked on my arm came in. I love the guy. Great guy. Um, but he came in and he was like, you're probably never going to be able to use your left hand again. And I was like, fuck you. There's not a night. I was like, I play piano. I play guitar. There's no effing way that's going to happen. Mm. I will diligently do my physical therapy. So I did. And then when I was released from the hospital, I had to keep on doing physical therapy, but life was so crazy. I, 
I don't feel I kept up on my physical therapy daily. So my hand, I mean, I don't know how far, how deep you want to go into this. I mean, I could keep on talking keep about Keep on this. talking, bro. Okay. Um, keep on talking. Uh, so scar tissue started to sit in and my hand went from doing this to being, I don't know if you've ever seen, you know, stroke victims with their hands all tightened up and everything. Uh, it, it probably in movies, lost. but I've never seen it like in real, in real life. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. So it, so all the tendons got tightened because of the scar tissue. So I literally couldn't like my relax. My hand was tight like that. I had to, I forgot how I had to do this to open it, like bend it down like this. So anyway, it was, it was screwed up. Got it. So, so then that was, that was during nine months. I had braces on my hand to help the tendons not tighten up. Nothing worked. Then I got the heart transplant Hand still <laughs> messed up. This is nine months later after the initial thing. Good Lord. So July 4th, 2011, I had the heart transplant. And then after the transplant, Everything's great. So then two months later, I was having issues with my blood pressure, with a bunch of other shit going wrong. And the doctors at first were like, you know, this is could be because of the new heart, because it's, you know, getting used to the cavity in your chest. You could be having high blood pressure because of that. You could be having, you know, it could be this rubbing inside your, you know, inside your body. But then shit kept on happening. I was having like, crazy blood pressure numbers, like stroke numbers, like Ooh, yeah, crazy. Man. And these massive headaches I was getting. So they finally did a test and, and, and the doctor goes, this, we're not going to, you don't have this, but we're going to test for it anyway. Um, <laughs> so they tested me for it and I had it. It was a tumor, oh my a tumor that it's, it, the tumor is called a, Pheochromocytoma tumor. Um, and it's luckily, we didn't know at the time, 99% of the time, it's non cancerous. Uh, but, which tripped me the fuck out all the time, is they kept on calling it cancer. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, so they did the test. I had just healed here, right, from, from the heart channel. I, I just started healing. My muscles started getting better. I was able to pick up the kids again and, and hold the kids. Um, I got a call from the hospital. You have to be admitted. Don't bend over. Don't lift anything heavy because the, the tumor was right in my abdominal area. Uh -huh. And they said, if, if you ex exacerbate it too much, you can stroke out. Good Lord. So I was like, are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? I was not nervous. I was not scared. I, know I was know. pissed. I'm like, <laughs> I gotta go back to the fucking hospital again. So anyway, so I was admitted to the hospital and then they told me, they came in, told me and my wife what it was. And because we didn't know it was cancer, not cancerous, they said, it's probably not cancer, but we won't know until we do further testing. Got it. My wife breaks down crying. Uh, and I'm thinking, I'm sitting there in the hospital bed and I'm looking at her. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? After I'm months. like... I, I was, like I said, I was more pissed that I had to deal with something else than, oh, this might be a death sentence. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I just didn't care. I'm like, I've been through so much over the last year. Let's just fucking get through this. <laughs> Let's get it out. Blah, blah, blah. So I had to go on certain medication for like a month and then uh, they did surgery uh, and removed it. Luckily, because they said if it's attached to your adrenal gland, you're going to have to have, uh, I forget, a, a, a Whipple bag or a whip bag, I don't know, something to do with you know uh, the adrenal glands processing. They had to cut my intestine or something, but Got luckily it. it was free floating in between the adrenal glands, and they were able to remove it. And then after that, I healed up, and then I was able to have surgery on my arm finally to <laughs> another remove. surgery. Dude, I had like 2000, <laughs> 2010 to 2011 into 2012. I, I can't even count how many surgeries I had. Um, but I, I can honestly say I can see how people get addicted to painkillers. Yeah. Holy smokes. It is so easy to just pop the pill. And I had to admit, after, after all surgeries were done, I still had a few left over. And if I was stressed out, I would pop one. And then when I ran out, it was like three left in the, in the bottle. Mm -hmm. But I, I popped them. They were so eat, such a simple fix, man, for anything. Yeah. 
So, and I obviously I couldn't get any more and I didn't, I wasn't, didn't take them long enough to go through withdrawal or anything, but I, I can totally see why, why these, how they're so addicted. Anybody just get so addicted. It's so easy. Um, but anyway, so the surgeries on my arm loosened up the tendons. They did reconstructive stuff. So I was able to get motion back in my hand. I'm able to still play piano, but guitar can't do it. I can't play guitar. Wow. Anymore. You can't play guitar, huh? I, I could do power chords, like, you know, simple stuff, but I, I'm not able to do nearly what I was to do, able to do before it. Um, and everybody says, you know, it's a decent trade off. You know, you're alive. Yeah, not only that, but you still have your arm. And like you said, you can play yeah. piano. Yeah, because when I went back in, actually, when I was recovering from the transplant in the ICU, some dude in the ICU <clears throat> had the same exact issue with me with heart failure and had compart it's called compartment syndrome when okay. the compartments of your uh, muscles need air um, or blood is cut off. He had compartment syndrome in his leg. They couldn't, they had to amputate it. Wow. And he was out. So he went down with, with two legs and woke up with one leg, with one leg. Dude, if that happened to me, cause I was at, when it first happened to me, I was in a coma for a fifth, my wife knows 11 days 15 days i don't remember so when i went in um i didn't know what was going on and when i woke up i was like what the fuck like because i remember leaving the house in a hospital because shit wasn't right i didn't feel right so i went to the hospital in an ambulance and i sort of felt things were going downhill in that ambulance ride um but I think I was in denial. I didn't think I'm like, oh, I got pain in my left arm. Oh, I'm vomiting. Oh, you know, I can't wait to get home because I have a meeting with a director. <laughs> Literally, I was in the hospital with an IV sitting up in the hospital bed, texting the director I had a meeting with. I'm like, I might be late. I'm in the hospital. Oh, my uh, goodness. I'm getting fluids now. I'll be fine. Blah, blah, blah. Then they took me for an MRI because my organs started shutting down everything. And then I was out. I, I coded twice in first hospital I was in and then they couldn't figure out what was wrong with me and then they helicoptered me to uh Cedars in Beverly Holy Hills. Holy moly. Yeah it was it was it was good times good times it, good memories. Is, um, is that it bro? Is that <laughs> do we have anything else? Good yeah, lord. I think, I think that's it after the after the arm surgeries I mean I could I could probably go back in for more reconstructive surgery on the arm but I'm like you're done let's sleep well enough alone you know my body's seen <laughs> a lot of drama uh but now, I mean, it's, it's you no know, knock on wood. I've been issue free with the, you know, no rejection. The meds are fine. I mean, obviously I got to be on meds for the rest of my life, but I was, I was taking vitamins and everything anyway. Mm -hmm. The only thing I fear is, and I was talking to my wife the other day because I just went back and replayed the first, uh, uh, I, I, I replayed Last of Us because I didn't play Last of Us 2. Uh -huh. So I wanted to replay Last of Us before I started Last of Us 2, which just started. And I'm thinking, you know, if anything like that happens now, I mean, yeah, we have a pandemic, but nothing on the scale of uh, some the apocalyptic last, but, shit happens. Right. I'm thinking, how the fuck am I going to survive? I need these meds to survive. You're Let fucked. fuck the zombies or whatever. I'm like, I'm going to die because I can't get my damn meds. I'm You're sure right. I'm not the only one that relies on meds to stay alive. Um, but That's seriously, true. it's like. That's true. How am I gonna? How, how is your that gonna your happen? wife is gonna use you as bait for zombies so she can escape with the kids. It's like I love exactly. you, honey, but you're fucked. <laughs> but keep me around. I like to take a leg. She'll sew it up and then drag me around and then take another leg. <laughs> that's she can't smart. just use me in one shot. She's got to make use of the body parts. That's right. That's right. You, you see, you're smart. You you already got a plan. <laughs> I'm just like a head and a torso at the last minute. <laughs> Yeah, you, you you write that down. That's a movie for you right there. You, you <laughs> write that fucking movie. Composite. How to music. keep your family alive during a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> fucking beautiful. But uh, going back to the whole idea of you explaining like what each song like means to you, like it would be awesome. Because again, just the story on its own, like you were just telling me right now, like I'm just like holy fuck. So, so I'm, I'm imagining you telling, you know, short videos, I don't know, fuck it, like, let's say eight minutes or some shit, right? You're right. talking about, you have the song playing in the background because it's your fucking song. I don't, I don't think anybody's going to fucking strike you down on YouTube because you're using <laughs> your fucking song, right? The copyright infringement there. <laughs> exactly. And then you, you're talking about your song, you're showing pictures because, again, I, remember, I still remember that picture of you, like, stapled from here. Oh, like, down the, the chest, back. yeah. You know, all that stuff, have family, like, dude, like, it's easy to give up. 
There's no question. It's easy to give up. And you were through so much shit. Like, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm, it's impressive. Like, you're here. You're fucking, look at that smile you got on your face right now. You're fucking alive. We're, we're talking about, you know, fucking collectibles and all this bullshit. But again, you went through all this shit. And yeah, it was you know, crazy. Time. You pull through it, dude. You pull through it. So it's an inspiration, dude. How many people are going through shit, like real, real shit? You know what I'm yeah. saying? And and even that your story, like, could be like, oh man, this motherfucker went through hell, and he and it, managed. It came out of nowhere, and he managed. And you look at him now; he looks like a fucking normal, you know, motherfucker. Like that, <laughs> that that could be me. Let's go, let's go. So yeah, so. It, it was. It was a trying period for sure. I mean, I honestly, I was going through it, but I'd have, you know, I give my wife, Tracy, fucking tons of massive credit um, because, I mean, she she was dealing it from, I would not say outside looking in, but she was dealing with everything, mm -hmm. you know, my, my issues, the fact that she had to maintain sort of a normal life for my boys because my boys were three at the time. Wow. Um, but uh, you have twins? Yes, twin boys. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah uh, so uh, we made them part of it. I mean, not the, the bad stuff. I mean, like when I came home with the 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 heart pump, uh, I had you know obviously it ran on batteries, and I always had to have batteries on me. And when when the thing beeped, I had to change the batteries. Yeah. So we 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 involved them in it. Like we told them, you know, had them do it a couple times, and. You know, oh, that's this beautiful. is how that's this perfect because we didn't want them. We don't want them scared of the situation. Um, yeah, you don't want to do what right. like normal people do. Like, no, 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 stop it. Oh, no, no, back, back it up, back it up. No, you're like, you know, I, I need this right. battery. Yeah, be Help part of this, out, man. You know? This is this is because we didn't honestly, we didn't know how long I'd be living on the, the LVAD pump. Uh, there's people that choose not to get the transplant at all. Um, wow, just leave on the pump and live with the pump. I mean, obviously, there's risks with anything you take. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was so limited. I was a father of young kids. I, I really couldn't mess around with them. I couldn't do much with them because of this device. That's heartbreaking um, right there. Ugh. I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't exercise. I, I, you know, there's, there's sh tons of shit I could not do. And I'm like, and at first, like three months after having it, they were like, well, you, your heart's doing really well. You know, we, we have, cause on, on the, when you're on those pumps, you usually don't have a pulse. Your heart's not strong enough to create an actual pulse in your body. So, <laughs> wow. but I, I was, I was able to, I had a pulse. So they're, they're thinking your heart's actually strong. Let's try to take this out. You know, let's see if you can live with your heart. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck yeah, let's do this. Went into the hospital. Couldn't do it. <laughs> Damn. As soon as they turned it off, my, my heart couldn't, I couldn't spend for it. I don't think, I don't know if they turned it off, but they it it's, turned it to its lowest set and then it, my heart couldn't do the job. So at that point, I think that was in February of 2011, and they're like, okay, you need to make a decision. Are you going to live with this Zelda or are you going to go on the transplant list? Man, that was a hard decision to make. Really? Very hard. Oh, yeah. I mean, only, only because I feared dying on the table. Okay. You know, the shit can go wrong. I mean, um, and I know I was alive with the Elba. I was living, but that makes sense. Machines fail. You know, shit happens. Um, so anyway, so it took a little bit of time to come to terms with being put on the list and saying, okay, put me on a list. And what I had to do was I had to be extremely selfish. I had, and I don't mean like, oh, I'm doing this for me. I had to disconnect myself. I had to envision myself because if I thought about my kids and I thought about my wife during that period of time, making that decision, I'd lose it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just like, no, I, I can't, I can't, I can't die. You know, I can't I take the risk of dying, but I was like, you know what? I started thinking like, fuck them. If I die, I'll be dead. I ain't going to feel anything. Forget mm -hmm. it. Who cares? I had to force myself to be a jackass, you know, not directly to my family, but in thinking about my family. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because as soon as I started thinking about them, uh, I, like I said, I would, I would get upset and I couldn't make the decision. So I, I got in this train of thought that, okay, let's do it. Let's get the transplants being put on the list. And um, that was my train of thought leading up to the, to the day of the surgery. And when I, when we got the call, 
we were frantically running around. Obviously, it was in the middle of the night. Um, we went to Cedars and hours of prep to get my blood count right. Mm -hmm. Everything had to be optimal for the surgery. And quick question. Can, let me interject real quick. When you get the call, that means there's the heart, there's somebody's heart, and it's ready for you to get, like, put it's, in your... It's on its way. They'll say it's on its okay. way. But, like, so, it needs to be, like, done ASAP. You have to sort of be efficient about it. Yeah. Okay. You can't be like, I can't make it now. How's Thursday sound? You know, it's, <laughs> it's not like that. You sort of have to, like, drop, <laughs> drop your stuff and, and make sure you have your shit in order. Like, we had somebody uh, that was available to watch the kids because they knew the time was... Because you're, you're put on a, a transplant list for a month. You have 30 days to be top priority on the transplant list. And if you don't get a call that saying they have a match, you get dropped down the rungs and then you're not priority much. Okay. Yeah, I think, I don't know exactly the, the rules to it, but you're not priority. So anyway, on the, like the 29th day, we got the call or the 30th oh day. God, it was clutch. really late in, in the 30 day period. Um, so anyway, so we got it at midnight. They had the heart or the heart was on the way. And it's funny because we, 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 Tracy and I, we sprung out of bed and we were like, we looked at each other because we had a plan. We had a step-by-step a, a -step plan to get out of the house. We jumped out of bed, looked at each other, across the bed, like, what do we do? What the fuck? It was actually pretty funny. So she called her friend. Friend was on her way. The boys were actually still sleeping. I went in their rooms. I, I gave them a kiss. Um, and then we get in the car and I'm like, fuck, we need gas. <laughs> so we got to stop at the gas station. And Tracy's like, I cannot believe this. There's a heart waiting for you, and you don't have gas in your car. <laughs> so anyway, so back to the train of thought of, you know, being selfish. It's funny because I'm getting wheeled in to surgery. I say goodbye to my wife. Um, at that point, because there's a separation between, you know, hallway of the operating room and mm -hmm. where, where the family is, or the, as far as the family could go. So I kiss her goodbye, and I started getting really emotional. I'm like, fuck, 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 fuck. I started getting mad, but I couldn't stop the emotions so so then i they wheel me in the knob room they're prepping me and i'm bawling i am i just like totally lose it i can barely go from the gurney to the operating table <laughs> and the nurse goes it's okay everything's gonna be fine think about your kids i'm like that's why i'm fucking crying <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't help and i was i was like i it was it was such a powerful fear you know, mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was a fear that was warranted. Like it needed to be done. I, yeah. I, I needed to have that surgery. So they're like, calm down. We're giving you the fluids. Now you'll, you'll be count back from whatever and you'll be out. And I went out like that and I woke up in the ICU and it was done. Whew. You know, but like I'm saying, if I went to, if I, if I, I got that far to accept being put down, mm -hmm. put to sleep, I wouldn't know anything. You know, Correct. if I didn't make it, I'd be. Exactly. Yep. So, you know, that I had to, and that, I, I don't know, some, some people saying that's accepting death or accepting, I don't know, but I, I, I had to think that way in order to go through with that decision. And uh, it helped up until the time of the surgery when all I could think about was my kids and my wife. And I just started bawling. But the, the that, perfect but place yeah, to that have was... that breakdown because at that point you're fucked because it's going. Yeah, me. there's no turning back now. Yeah, yeah. Like you're going down, so, son. They couldn't give me that uh, IV fast enough to knock me out. But <laughs> anyway. Uh... That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. Listen, I'm just I mean, happy. That whole, that whole episode of my life to take up your uh, video cast. This is what this shit's about. I fucking love it. Listen, it's just been great. Calm down. Because you probably make somebody else's fucking day. Like, <laughs> they're probably going to throw them shit. They're like, God damn, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, this motherfucker had, like, heart surgery. Fucking his arm was almost going to get shelled off. And I'm crying here because, I don't know. Fuck, I'm, in, I'm, I'm enclosed in my house. Because of this goddamn pandemic. So, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing that story. And I wanted to ask you, because uh, yep. you love sports. I know you're into baseball. You're a Yankees yep. fan, right? Yep. And unfortunately, a Giants fan in uh, football. <laughs> I, I'm more of a, like, I love football. I love watching football. Giants is my team. Um, but I'm not as into the team and stats and the, and the players as I am with the Yankees and baseball. Okay. Um, 
because I re- we were a baseball family growing up and I played little league. Um, I never played football. Um, and I didn't really start getting back into football until I was older. My dad watched the jets and he watched the giants. He watched both. Um, I don't understand how, um, I know, right. It's either one or the other from what I believe. Um, but I remember watching giants, giants and jets games with him. And so when I got back into football in my older years, cause I had a period where it was just rock and roll playing in bands and everything. And there was no sports, which by the way, you look at yourself. Like if you like right now, no context, I see the, I see a picture of you. I'm thinking this motherfucker's in a goddamn rock and roll band, some heavy metal shit. Let's go. Show me the album, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sort of like the look goes sort of against, you know, my innards. <laughs> my yeah, innards. I think about uh, uh, Brian Tyler. Like, if you look at Brian Tyler's fucking sh- headshot, this yeah. motherfucker looks beautiful as fuck. Like, God yeah, damn. He's a model or actor. And... <laughs> Jesus Christ. But then I look at you, you're like, all oh, the first step, let's go. <laughs> That's how I used to be, man. That's back, what's up. Back in the day. Um but I think I got back into watching football before the boys were born uh, was more for nostalgic reasons. Okay. So, and I still love watching football. I love watching, there's a, there's on Thursday, Monday, Sunday night, and all day Sunday, there's games on in the house mm-hmm. all the time, no matter what team. Uh, I get the NFL package. Um, I don't know, I just like the sport. Um, and this year has been tough. Both being a Giants fan and just seeing all the all the goddamn injuries, mm. like dude, crazy. Saquon Barkley, like, ooh, and then Dak horrible. Prescott, and then you know, just they've been brutal. They've been Very they, brutal. they haven't been like everybody was at first. Everybody was going down with hamstrings, mm-hmm. and then it, it was. It just seems like to be a bad year. I, I I think it has to do with the lack of. I don't know what it could be. Training, lack tra- training, training the, the, the four games, uh, the preseason games. Yeah, it, yeah. So it, it's, I'm sure it's, that has something to do with it. It's amazing to me how preseason games are so ri- were so ridiculed, you know, in years past, including last year. Everybody's like, oh, it's a fucking preseason game. Who cares? So it's a preseason game. And how important they are to the fucking right. game, dude. It's, like, it's, it's sort of like a, an, an on-ramp to the season. Yeah, and, and, and you still, you know, like, the teams have to cut down to get their 53-man roster. So right. a, a lot of these kids, a lot of these, they're kids, you know? Some, some of these are kids getting their first, eto, you know, chance to get be in the NFL, and they, they like, their, their, their spotlight is preseason. Like, if you don't have right. preseason, then how am I going to show my skills? And a lot of people got cut. I was watching Hard Knocks on HBO, and, you know, both coaches, because the Rams and the Chargers, it was both, oh, both teams. Right. And everybody was just like, fuck, we don't have preseason. Like, we are not going to be able to see these guys playing another team, see what they can bring, and we're just going to have to fucking cut from what we're seeing yeah. in practice. And not only that, but again, contact. Like, you, you need to get that contact. You need to... Exactly. It, it, it's crazy. But yeah, I, I agree. I'm sure it has everything to do with all that stuff. So, yeah, and it sucks, man. And it sucks. You see all those injuries. Again, the, the, the Giants with Barkley, just like, I forgot. It was really early in the season. He got... Yeah, it was the was it the second game? Second I think so. Game? Something like my that. son, one of my son, he's a Barkley diehard fan. Like he's, my sons are way more into football than I am. And I don't <laughs> know where sick. it came from because I didn't push it on them. They, they love, love it. it. They know they do fantasy oh, both in football and baseball. They know the players, and they'll constantly be, they'll say a name. They're like, "Dad, do you even know who that is?" I'm like, "Fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> they'll call me out on, on it all the time and then uh but yeah when, when saquon went down my one son had little tears in his eyes and uh, I was, he's like oh, he goes, it's my favorite place out for the season i'm like i know it's like it sucks man it was it brutal it blows, it blows. Uh, but yeah they love it they love baseball they like, like again they're up on everything the hot picks the, uh just all the stats and it's just insane. It's it's definitely not like it used to be. I mean, when I was growing up with baseball, I mean, you had the baseball almanac, you had the the, the sports section, mm-hmm. you had baseball cards, and then you had you didn't we didn't even have ESPN early, early, early when we were young, you know. So it's like they've got so much coverage, and they love it. They yeah, love the when you play when you play um fantasy, you know everybody. Yeah, exactly. Like, like, and I think that's how they ended up really knowing the league in and out and 
they'll say a name. And I'm like, I know the name. I don't know what team he's on <laughs> because, you know, it's, it's hard enough to keep up with, you know, with my work and, and, and stuff and family life. It, it's hard to keep up on, you know, every move the Yankees make. Yeah. And the kids want me to remember who's moving from what team and what other team and then another division. I'm like, come on guys. Yeah. They give me a hard time about it all the time. That's hilarious. That's so funny. I listen. Your kids are freaking awesome. They're thirteen now. You said thirteen. Thirteen. And they played, uh, this has been a tough year because there's been no uh, baseball for them. Um, oh, they, that's right. They can't. They they haven't been able to. They uh, cannot. They we yeah. They they started the season in 2020 in March, and then, and then just fucking everything. shit hit, and they had to cancel the season. And now. Um, they're not part of little league anymore. They're part of, uh, uh, they're, they're in a pony league now. Um, so they're have to abide by the rules of like LA parks and rec the league it. that they're in. So, um, that league that they're in now is actually starting up a season of just practices. Um, so they get, we get to do that with them, but I, I was taking them to the field. Luckily, you know, there's two of them. I can take mm-hmm. them to the field and they can, you know, work on stuff and everything. Um, and then just about two months ago, we started going to a practice that a friend of mine holds and they know all the kids because mm-hmm. they've been in the leagues together and school <laughs> with some. So it's nice. Everybody wears a mask. Um, everybody abides by the rules and then, you know, they get some field time and batting time and everything. So yeah, they love it. Then they, they think they're going to be MLB players. You know, they're still at that age, I think where. You know, Listen, but I don't put in I the never, work, bro. You never I know. never say I ever I never say I'm not saying that they won't be. Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying that they don't I mean you see some kids their age that are just studs. You know, they're like already six feet tall. Like you know, you have, know they're going. They just have the body makeup and they're great players and that shit is just not in our genes, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm not saying the talent's not there. I mean, they're fucking, I mean, I don't want to toot my own horn as a, a baseball dad, but they're good players. I mean, they, mm-hmm. they, they know the game. They, they're they smart on the field. Um, but there's a size thing yeah, that comes into play, unfortunately. I'm not saying it's the only thing. You're pushing to the uh, choir, buddy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, they, I'm they five, have... five, and I never, or five, I think five, five, right? And I was never able to play, but my mom never allowed me to play football. You know, in Puerto yeah. Rico, we had the, uh, my dad's in the, well, was in the military, in the National Guard. Right. And so we had access to the, to the fort there, the, whatever, the army station. And there was a football team. There was a football league, if you will, in there. I always wanted to play football, never got to play football. I'm Puerto Rican, so I play, I play baseball, of course, no question. Right. But. Right. You know, this little ass kid, man, where are you going to go, bro? Uh-uh, uh-uh. So, of course, yeah. here I am I mean, making there, videos. There are, <laughs> there are a lot of major league players now that are, you know, not that don't measure up to the standard, the old standard. Mm-hmm. It's an old standard. It's an old, you know, I wouldn't say stat, but it's like you can't just dismiss them anymore Got because it. of their height. Um, there's so many good players that are not six feet tall or whatever, six, five. Um, so what, what's going, what, what my boys have going for them is one, they're, they're, they're physically talented at the sport and they're, and they're baseball smart. So, I mean, if they just keep it up, you know, who knows? And I never say that you're not going to be, and I never say have a backup plan, but we always, always tell them education is first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You know, if your education's not being, held up you don't get to play baseball and that's been the rule in our house since they started playing baseball if you have bad grades you don't play awesome so, and i don't know where they get this either but they're freaking straight a students they fucking didn't get it from me <laughs> i don't know what it is man i don't they they <laughs> they hate school but they're good at it they're they, they're just that's 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 yeah, perfect because i hated school I'm, and I was... I'm lucky i'm lucky to have them as kids that's awesome that's awesome so, Dude, listen, I appreciate your fucking time, man. Thank you so much, brother. Oh, I my appreciate goodness, it all. How long are we going I, for almost I, I, I know. It's like 2.38 over here, dude. And and you, you know, we wanted like, what, 40 minutes or some shit like At that? At first, <laughs> yeah, we set it for 40 minutes. I, You know, if I if I get comfortable, uh, it's going to – it takes time to shut me up. Awesome. Sometimes Let, that, that makes me say stupid things during these – these video things and i regret it afterwards but this one has been nice and chill and there's was no pressure so it was, perfect i appreciate it I, no i appreciate thank you for the feedback because that's exactly what i want to that's the environment i want to 
Right, right exactly. I, I don't like, I hate when I'm in an, in, not to keep this going, like I said, it's okay, go ahead, keep going. Shut me up. <laughs> when I'm in uh, these type of things and it's more of an interview, interviewee atmosphere, because mm-hmm. then you, then there's pressure. Like, I just want to chill, you know? I just yep. want to have a conversation, just talk. That's what I'm talking And if you about. say something stupid, it's because, dude, we were just talking. It wasn't a legit, you know, a legit mm-hmm. question or, um, or uh, I've had interviews where I have, it has been video or audio dialogue and then it goes to text and they release it in text. And in, in the dialogue back and forth, I said, okay, I'm going to say this, but you can't use it. <laughs> Guess what ends up in the text? Not the part where I say you can't use this, just what I said. Just what you said. So like, I'm very apprehensive about certain situations where I don't know the person or well, now, you know, you live and learn. So you, yeah, you sort yeah. of know how to navigate those waters now. But I remember the first time it happened, I was like, Whoa. and it was published in a magazine. It wasn't even a fucking uh, internet article. <laughs> it was a legit magazine article. And I'm like, you fucking idiots. I said, <laughs> don't print this. Motherfuckers. Oh, they went with I guess it my anyway. PR guy didn't check the text after the interview. What a bitch. But anyway, no, but this has been super comfortable, dude. These are the types this is the type of thing that I like. So that's why I was like just hands down, fuck, let's just do it, you know. Awesome. It's not it's not project oriented, it's not, you know, it's not PR driven, it's it's just it's, talking. Yep, yep, that's exactly what it is. Awesome. Hey, listen, Sweet Kevin. Hey, first of all, before I go, how do you pronounce your last name? How do you think you pronounce it? I think it's Ripple. That's it. Oh, so, 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 so does your, uh, Instagram account read cripple? It reads cripple. <laughs> yes, it does. But I'm not Ma- mentally, maybe, but not physically. Uh, so insensitive, dude. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I know. Is it not politically correct to name, have my, well, honestly, 90% of people probably say cripple. And they're like, what the fuck's a cripple? Cripple. Have you had any in a professional setting, like somebody be like, uh, Mr. Ripple? And you're like, uh, Dude, it's a ripple. I worked for Epic Games for a lot, not worked for, but I did work for Epic Games for a lot of years. Mm-hmm. On the Unreal Tournament games, ended with Gear. Actually, I did an, an Unreal Tournament after Gears of War. And Cliff, when he was at Epic, Cliff Blazinski. Mm-hmm. He said my name wrong all the time. It wasn't far from Ripple. It was, it was, it was, it was reap. Like he emphasized the E, like it was Ripple. And it happened so many times and a stupid me didn't correct him. And I just let it go. I was like, okay, he's going to call me that. And I feel bad, but it, you know, that ship sailed way long ago. And it's like, do I make him feel bad that he's been calling me, pronouncing it wrong this time, this long, or do I just let it slide? I let it slide, but I don't really converse with him much anymore either. So he doesn't have to, you know, mm. say my name. <laughs> If you ever uh, work in a project with him again, you'll be, you'll make sure to be like, puppy. I'll be like, dude, get it ripping. fucking right. And, uh, <laughs> he's great. I, you know, he was he was wonderful to work with. Uh, but yeah, I just never corrected him, and I just feel, you know, I missed that opportunity, that, and then it was just too late. <laughs> that that boat sell like your your name Ripple was in that boat, and it's like, Ripple. bye, buddy. It was funny because after that, after I experienced that with him for a while, I had it on my site, uh, the pronunciation of the name. Oh, did you? Yeah. I had R I P P L E in, you know, parentheses. Uh, but then I, you know, I redid my site. I just never put it back. But what, did, like, what does that last name come from? It's German. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, that's funny. because my wife's last name is German. You know, they, they came like most of her, her ancestors came actually dude. I think it was her great grandfather was from germany like yeah. on her that side her last name is hauger hauger how is that spelled um h-a-u-g-e-r yep okay yeah so so hauger i honestly think you pronounce it i mean i don't know I, i'm probably <clears throat> wrong but i think it's more of a i mean if you really want to take the german accent i think it's more of a a hippel 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 That's funny. That's funny. I don't know, yeah. Who knows? My my great grandfather, whoever came over first with the name, who knows if it was even longer? You know, I don't. I don't know. My dad probably knows, but I don't think. I think it was Ripple, but who knows? They they shorten names all the time when they came to the Americas. That's true, or change them, yeah, because yeah. They, they were fucking impossible to pronounce. You're like, oh, right. let's just 
go with this shit. Fuck it. Right, exactly. I don't want anybody thinking I'm a Nazi, so it sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true, man. That's so true. That's so funny. Anyway, uh, dude, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate no it, brother. Problem, dude. You this have a great a fucking day. It was uh, 100%. Uh, much blessings to you and your family, and you. I'm sure we'll do this again sometime. Yeah, I'm up for it, man. I love having these conversations. Beautiful, brother. Anyway, I'm out, bitches. Oh.